take it. I had to run a little early. But I, I watch you, you know, we watch it on, on Facebook every every day. I yeah. follow it up. Yeah, absolutely. I keep learning from it. I recognize a young lady there, but your name has come up as Sherry, so you need to change your name. Why is my name Sherry? It's just it's a it's a fluke in the system. I can't get rid of it. It's kind of one of like one of those things. Okay, I'll be Sherry today. No, change the name. How do I change it? I know I'm trying to. All right, so on the right hand side, you see participants, you see your name there? I oh wait a minute. Maybe oh I yes. Uh, yeah, I see. oh yeah, I see it. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Here's the three dots and then you can say rename. Yes. Thank you. There you go. Well, Tanner, that's the problem. You get on these on these calls, you get better, then you have all these appointments, you don't have time for me anymore. Big problems. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. Thanks to you. You know, it's a good problem, but I, I, you know, I truly appreciate everything you guys do, and I will keep joining. I have well, to make you know, my commitment. I got some exciting news to share with you, guys. No, I'm not having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I could be a great grandfather any day. Oh, that's exciting! Great grandfather. You don't look old enough to be. Agreed. Well, I mean, th theoretically, I've got a uh, 19 grandson, so I could be. Okay. I had my first child in high school at 17, so. Oh, yes. Well, I started pretty early. Really? So, Tanner, I'll tell you yes. what, maybe if our. Uh, Jenna, can I can I make you a co-host so you can let people in? You know how to do that? Sure. Yes. Uh yes, I believe so. It'll pop up and I'll just let them in, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. There we go. There you go. All right. Well, welcome everybody. I've got one o'clock. It is actually time for Danny Grimes Mastery Role Play. And you might be joining us live. There's people coming in. That's typical. People come in a few minutes late. Or you might be watching by video on YouTube. If you join my haven't joined my YouTube channel, please go ahead and like and subscribe. My goal is to get to a thousand. And I do have some news to share with you guys that I have basically emailed to me today. I've been talking about putting together a book, and I'm working with someone and kind of a writer. And it looks like I'm going to be signing a contract to put my book together and have it ready in uh, in about six months. And I might be talking about you. I might even be coming to you guys for a little bit of uh, feedback on the book, too. That's great. So anyway, what we do, you guys, is we do uh, mastery. It's all about question-based listening, enhan listening enhanced. And, you know, we what we want to do is get away from a lot of people. Hey, you have a book of scripts. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm doing my best, you guys, to teach you how to think. Now, there's some great conversations out there, scripts that you can use, but I, I'm teaching you how to listen. Just get into a normal conversation, understand the concepts and listen. They will help you. They will help you determine where you should take the conversation. Today is August 9th. And if you want to join us live, there's a QR code and or just go to Denny's Mastery. Um, I have a, a pretty loyal following and I'd like to go in whatever direction you guys want to go into. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about and just remind folks of is the thought of the day. One of the rules that I have in my role play here, you guys, is we do not allow, I don't allow you guys to have conversations that do anything about predicting the future. Because you know what? That's not what we're hired to do. We're not hired to predict the future. We're hired to tell them what we know. We can share real estate trends. And a wise guy said that predicting the future, forget about predicting the future if you can't explain the present. And that's actually my quote. I just like Einstein's picture. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Now, we've talked about interest rates before. A lot of people seem to worry about interest rates. Does anybody know what a 30 year interest rate is today, roughly within? A decimal point. Six and a quarter. Six and a half, six and a quarter. Yeah, something like that. All right. And why I ask that is I think you guys should be somewhat uh, up to speed on what's going on and talk about interest rate. Why? Because the media loves to talk about it. 
and 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 buyers and sellers, mainly buyers, seem to be focused on that because they think they should be focused on it. So for you not to know, and I don't think we should know every day down to the you know third decimal point. I think you should have a feel, and particularly I think you should have a feel for which way interest rates are going. Now, I don't think you should know so you can predict the future. I want you to be ahead mentally of buyers and sellers. So somebody tell me which way is the wind blowing when it comes to mortgage rates? You don't, whatever you know, share with it. Uh, and I don't expect everyone to know, uh, be a brainiac and know labor statistics and GDP and all the other things. Tell me what's really been the conversation in the last week or two. With, with, with buyers, you know, we, we so I have one particular buyer ju just signed yesterday, Danny, and, and you know, like, obviously the interest rates came down than what they were a couple of months before, and they really knew that, they were aware of that. That's why they just, like, pushed them a little, kind of, like, gave them a little extra push to move forward now faster is that i, I don't know it. what you meant but no uh, now i want to know what is the, which way is the wind blowing on the trend of interest rates is there upward pressure is there downward pressure is there no pressure at all because over the last week or two there's been a lot of conversation on what the fed is going to do with interest rates and the reason i want to know and this isn't going to be about interest rates guys so don't log out of here i have a different thought on trending interest rates i just want to know if you are somewhat up to speed with what's what they're talking about and so if you are or aren't here's the bottom line i have mentioned this before i if you like podcasts there's a great podcast called the morning morning wire and they really have about 20 or 30 minutes they talk about things and you don't have to listen to everyone minute to minute all the way through it but they give you a lot of ideas of what's going on with the rates and in a nutshell, and this is my last comment on it, they're saying the Fed's now behind the curve because uh, inflation's down. The labor numbers came out this week. They weren't good. What happened to the stock market? It lost 1,000 points. People are now afraid of the, uh, starting to use the R word again. So interest rates may come down. Here's the thing that I want. Here's the mastery level concept here. In my opinion, when rates start to fall, it makes buyers wait, not act. Why? Because every day they wait, they might get a better rate. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes out and the, the Fed says, well, hey, we're going to probably lower the rates in September, why would a buyer want to act now? Well, they're, in November, the Fed said, we're going to lower interest rates six times in 2024. Well, I'm not going to buy. I'm going to wait for the sixth time. You see what I'm saying? I want you guys to kind of know because the bottom line is, and I did this for someone this past week and we'll go, go on and we'll have some conversations. Take a $500,000 mortgage. And you know, right, if you're right around six and a half, I have not seen that yet, but six and three quarters, it was as high as seven and a quarter, right? So it's already down quite a bit. But if I think in my mind, if interest rates got down to five point something, 5.9, I think that would be the whistle that buyers would say, I better get what they get, it's good. Well, the interesting thing, based on interest rates today and 5.9 on a $500,000 mortgage is about $10 a day. So is $10 a day worth waiting? That's what I want you to understand. We have to have conversations. You can wait till you get to 5.9. However, there's gonna be a lot of buyers stepping in most likely. What happens to the seller's mindset when that happens? Right now, sellers, we're having our market, sellers are cutting their prices, they're giving away their firstborn, whatever they need to do, they're more motivated. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So who's going first? Let's have some conversations. And I might even be in there and I might give some pushback from a buyer seller standpoint. So uh you know, who's got a hand up ready to go? Let's have a conversation. I think Sherry Bikino should go. Because <laughs> there's like 10 of them. Oh, that's, uh, that's Ginger. Right? Ginger, you ready to go? 
Um, you kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't want to. You can think about it. Who's ready to have a conversation by yourself? Tanner, lead us off. You're never shy. I'll start off, yeah. All right. So you said you had a buyer and they signed an agreement. Right? Yep. I'm going to be that buyer. Yes. Okay. Um. All right. Hang on a minute. So, Stopwatch. We're going to try to get here two two minutes. Uh, Stopwatch. Yeah. So Tanner, I think the um, you know, all right. So I, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you help me find a home. And I'm not even going to ask you about this NAR commission thing. I just, I'm just not sure. Now is the best time for me to move because I've heard interest rates are going to fall in September, maybe even in October, just before the election. Go. So I understand any and I respect that opinion. Uh, I'm curious, other than not, and it's, I, I, look, I give you credit, it's very important to know, you know, information, but other than that uncertainty, is there anything else that would stop you from becoming a homeowner? So there's a model up here, that's the acknowledgement, uh, the acknowledgement, I mean, the isolating question. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think if we could get down, you know, a little bit, or they're falling, I think they're just going to be a bit, be a better time towards the end of the year. So I don't mind talking to you. You can send me some properties, and, but I want to get down and dirty closer to the end of the year. Sure, Danny. And currently, do you own or you rent then? You guys write that down. If you're talking to a buyer, you better have that question first. Are you married or single? Because it really matters. I'm kidding about the married or single, but that's kind of like, uh, are you are you renting or owning? Uh, well, we currently own. You currently own. And what made you think about purchasing another home? Notice he's doing. He's following the model. You're going into motivation. Uh, well, we have. Uh, I've got an elderly parent moving moving down, and we're going to probably have to take care of them. So we're looking for something that maybe has a detached casita or something. Okay. And how long have you been thinking about making this move? Well, we were happy in our house, but we had about a month ago, my wife's, my wife's mom is not doing well. So now we're thinking about it and it's, her health is kind of deteriorating. So it's, it's okay. So what, I mean, when, in a perfect world, when would you like to have this completed and moved into a new place? I don't want to go too three. I could go three deep, Danny, just for the sake of time. I just wanted to, you know, uh, it's fine. We're, I could just model the whole thing. Well, we don't, I mean, if you're having a conversation, this could be a 15 or 20 minute conversation. We're trying to get to the essence of it. So I really respect that. So ideally, um, I think we'd like to have her settled by Thanksgiving. Okay. So Danny, when you mentioned, you know, uh, uh, the rate or is, is this more of a, like affordability issue or it's like a will issue? Uh, I don't really know. I mean, it wouldn't, I mean, if I could buy, if you could get a lower financing when you're going to buy something and save several hundred dollars a month, don't you think that'd be prudent? Okay. When you say lower, what do you mean exactly by lower? Boom. That's where I wanted him to go. This is the point I drove home last Friday, all week during our daily call called recon. You have better get to a number. I say this a lot. If you want to fly, fly, fly Southwest. But when you're deal dealing with a customer, get to the Delta. And by the way, I don't fly Southwest because I don't like to have a free fall for my seat. <laughs> so so he, yeah. let's dissect that. So he went, let me stop that. He went through the model. He acknowledged, he isolated, attempted to get some clarification, and then just following the bases. That's first base. He went to my motivation. Would you not say I'm a motivated seller? Yes. Okay. Um, I got a, my mother-in-law mo moving in maybe by Thanksgiving. Her health is deteriorating. Does that spell motivation? Most likely, yes. So then if I'm waiting on interest rates, then you've got to get to, uh, you got to take rates to a number. So, Jenica, you've got your hand up. Can you take over from there? Okay. So, uh, how how low of a rate would make sense for you? Uh, I, I would uh, I would think that if I could get as low as possible. But I think they're going to come down. I mean, so even if it comes down a little bit, I'm going to be, be better off in October. And I know that kind of puts me in a tough timeline. 
to get them in by Thanksgiving, but I think that it might be worth, you know, say a couple hundred dollars a month. Okay. Okay. What if we could show you that with, because prices are coming down in the area you're looking in, if we could have the seller buy the rate down to get it to where you want it now, would, would you make a move now? Well, okay. So, but they're going to buy it down for 30 years. Possibly. I mean, that might cost him 20 grand. So, uh, so I'm going to pause your timer there. Okay. Um, just for me, I don't know that I'd go down there. Here's the, here's the reason I don't want you to go down that road. To get a buy down, does it not involve someone else? Yes. And do we have any control over that someone else? No. So I would rather you stay on a solid service and not go off-roading because you never know when you're going to get stuck. Okay. So don't go down that road. What road might you want to go down? Was you get clarity on this? Okay, you're asking me some good questions, but here's where I want you to go. Somehow get me to the delta, the delta, the difference between maybe rates now and rates where I think they're going to be. Okay. Okay. Go. So, so I forget what you said. Um, how low of a rate did you say? Sorry. Well, if it goes down, let's say it goes down three quarters of a point. Let's say it goes down to five, uh, six percent or five point nine percent. Let's just make it round six percent. That's a whole lot better than six and three quarters, don't you think? It definitely is lower. Did you know that what that ends up being in your payment is about ten dollars a day? How'd you figure that? I don't know. Denny did the math. <laughs> All right, let's stop. Does anybody have a calculator that can work through this? Now, again, I know we're on a time crunch here and you, we're trying to do this in a couple of minutes, but this is something I think it's important you, you do. Does anyone have the knowledge and have on your phone or a calculator that you can actually walk somebody through the, the mathematical calculation here? Nope. If you don't, I'll, I'll show you how, really quickly how to do it. Anybody? I'm thinking one thing that I missed. Should I have asked me maybe, do you need to sell this home in order to purchase one? I think I missed that just to see how much mortgage they would need. Yeah, I know. I mean, right. Normally you would have asked that question, but that's okay. I don't I don't need to sell it. But I but what is the difference? So here, so watch this. I'll do this really quickly. Um I would say, okay, Jenica, let's just reverse them. We'll just reverse this, right? <laughs> so let me ask you. So when you have you been looking around. Have you been scouting the market and looking for the houses that maybe have a casita? Yes. And what kind of price range are you looking at there? Mm, like 700. Okay. Now, do you are you planning on selling this house to buy that house? Or do you need to sell this house to buy that house? That's I broke a rule. You only ask one question at a time. Do you need to sell this house before you buy the other house? No, we'll sell it later. Okay. And so it's 700,000. And how much of your, uh, how much will you be putting down for, oh, forgive me. Will you be paying cash on this house or financing it? Uh, we'll be financing it. You know, that's kind of a, it's kind of a stupid question, but it's a, it's a trick question. Why? Mm -hmm. If he was paying cash, would interest rates matter? No, no. So, all right. So you're, so how much would you be financing, Jenica? Uh, 80%. So 700 times 80%. Okay, guys. So now you all are watching me. I'm going to be nervous. 700 point eight times. That's 560,000. I'm going to ask anybody else. You want to figure out a mortgage payment at let's go six and three quarters at 560,000. You do it. Let's see if you can beat me. That's present value. 6.75 GI 30. G 3632. Who got it? Anybody? 3600. Yeah, 3632. Now, that's what the mortgage payment would be on six and three quarters. Now, I want to wait to 6%. I'm betting on 6%, right? So then I'm now on my calculator, I'm just going to put in 6%. 6.0 GI payment is 3357. 36, 32 minus, that's $274 a month. Or what? 
nine bucks. Nine dollars a day. Less than ten dollars. Yeah. So now that you know that, now that you have got the delta, how would you use that? And now we're going to go right, right over here. You know the motivation. We're going to go to this side. It's <laughs> going to be pain. Who wants and, and you, anyone can play here? I see you guys are kind of hiding out. Got a lot of sherries. Anyone want to walk through the conversation uh, from from that point? How would you use that? And here's the here's the beauty, guys. If you walk them through this and they understand, they get it, and you never bring up the the seller doing a buy down or a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, a buy down on the rate. Isn't that wonderful? Because now you don't have to worry about somebody you have no control over. Mm -hmm. So who wants to take the conversation for the next couple of minutes? Now that you know, it's roughly, we can round it up nine or $10 a day. I'll go if nobody else wants All to. All right, Jennifer, go. Okay. So Denny, so when we did the math, it's about $9 a day that the difference in the rate you said you want and the rate way rates are today. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like it's worth losing let's say a great house with a casita for nine dollars a day nice try uh, well there's always you know it's meant to be it's god will there will always there'll be the right house at the right time i'm sure there's more than one house with a casita so be careful laying that card okay it work what um tell me this what happens if you don't get your i think it was your mom your mom into a house by by thanksgiving now Write down, write this down. What she's doing is she's beginning to get into which is the greater pain. Remember, making a decision. I mean, some of you guys probably in high school, you know, Jenica, you look like attractive lady. You probably have to decide, well, I'm going to date that guy or that guy. I mean, some of us only had one choice, like Tanner and me only had one choice. Okay, so there's going to be pros and cons of our decision, right? Yeah. So, all right, so how would you ask the greater pain? The greater pain would be, all right, so let me ask you, Jenica, which is the greater pain? Mm, okay. Securing the house now where you have it in plenty of time so you can get your mother all settled by Thanksgiving. Or maybe you're waiting on the rates between now and election period and the rate and the rates don't go down and maybe at that time, there's not a house you'd want to move your mother-in-law in. So she's going to have to move in with you. So what I'm asking is, is it worth $10 a day to make sure you have a house ready for her to move into? You see how you use that in the pain, which is a greater pain, buying a house too early or buying one too late? Mm -hmm. That's good. However, understand you can't use that technique unless you have the what, the quantified. See, if you said, well, what's the greater pain? I mean, paying six and six and three quarters now and um, and betting on they're going to have 6% later or when later happens, maybe interest rates even go up or they don't go down. You can make the statement, but I don't think there's as much power in the fact it's $9 a day. Let me ask you this. Would it be worth $9 a day to know that you've done the best thing for your wife's mother? Mm -hmm. so by the way, that does sound a lot more appealing than your mother-in-law. Yes, that's true. Oh, there you are. I was waiting for you, David. So, all right, that's... Any comments on that? Anybody learn something? Let's share. Uh, if 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 you're not a bot, at least say something. Maybe turn your camera on. Maybe I've just got bots on here. Dave is not a bot. I like how you made the difference too when it said. I think I said it's it worth ten dollars a day. I don't know to not have that, but you said, "Is it worth ten dollars a day to make sure you get what you want?" I think the way you said it was really helpful versus the way I tried to say it. Well, the other thing, who asked me the question, I think Tanner did, is this an affordability issue or a, a will issue? Did you ask me that, Tanner? Yeah. But I want, I want you to remember that question because when you're talking to a buyer and you break it down to $10, now, well, first of all, 
most people can afford ten dollars but but at some point in time the well, it's only ninety dollars a day. Well, there's going to be some point in time where they're they're not going to be able to afford it. However, a lot of times it's not an affordability issue; it's a want to issue. I call it a will issue. So if so, Jenna could just push back on me. Is it's nine dollars a day? How does that sound? And push back. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really willing to give that up because that's you know. Um, hundred dollars or more than that. Sorry, it's like three hundred dollars a month. Okay, so fine. Though that's a very common statement. So let me ask you: Is this an affordability issue for you, or a want to issue for you? Um, uh, I, I mean, I, we could afford it. We're approved tomorrow. I just, I, I really want to get that rate. I want to feel like I want a deal. Okay, so well, don't don't get too complicated on. on Adding the, adding the deal part to the role play is you want the rate. Okay, so, and I'm not even going to lay an easy card and look at the wife that she's basically looking at you like in a very stern look, you know. I'm going to say, okay, so the bottom line is this. Okay, so, so which is a greater pain? Making the decision now and securing the home, even though the rate is six and a half, six and three quarters, which, by the way, you could always refinance later if you wanted to. Or waiting too close to Thanksgiving, where maybe the rates actually go up and you still have your mother-in-law coming. Which which is the greater pain? So anyway, yeah. yeah, thank you, super helpful. Okay, let's go. Anybody have an aha on that? I see some more cameras on, thank you. I know that you're not boss. Margo, As you mentioned the beginning. Go ahead, Tana. about the squish, but the problem. As you mentioned at the very beginning, it's not really about the scripts, but the process that, you know, you teach us to follow up just to have that best clarity. Yeah, I mean, I people ask me, well, again, can I have a copy of your scripts? I don't really have any. I mean, if you're, if you're having a party at your house, I've said this before, I'll say it again. And I land in your town and I call you and say, look, I'm really turned around here. My GPS isn't working on my phone. How do I get to your home? Do you need a script to tell me? You start with a question, well, where are you? Well, I just got out of the airport. I'm over here by a Target and there's a, a Red Lobster right across the street. Okay, I know where you are, what, what you want to do. Go out, of the, go out of that parking lot. You're going to give directions based on where the starting point is. And all we're doing here on Mastery is giving you the confidence and the knowledge to be able to give directions to where you want them to go. Sure, from the airport may be easy in your hometown. How about if they land in the airport in the state next door? Or how about if they land in the state on the other coast? You're gonna be able to give them directions no matter how far away they are because it's just a very logical process. And I think, I, I think you guys will get that. The, the beauty in what this what happens here is this is I, there there is no and I would love to be able to do a reality show where I would fly into town and you would take me in and to one of your appointments I sit with one of your buyers and sellers and I'm not patting myself on the back that I'm some sort of smart guy I I have just worked on this I cannot be outscripted by one of your buyers and sellers you can throw something at me you cannot you cannot outscript me. Now, that, that does not mean everyone I talk to is going to like bark like a dog and sign a contract and we're going to hypnotize them because there's some people that just aren't going to do it. They don't have the motivation. However, I will never be stumped. You can be there too. So let's go to something next. Who would like to have a conversation? David, you're on. And I said, if you're going to be on, you got to play. David is in our marketplace. He is, he, he, we do spend some time coaching together. He's got a great business in East Lee County and uh, probably one of the better better producing agents right now. And he's learning. So David, Thanks, throw David. something out you want to work on. Uh, uh, seller, um, seller arguing over buy, paying buyer compensation. Anybody want to handle it? I I can do it unless somebody else wants to do it. Well, you you be the buyer, Tanner. I want him to handle it. Okay, that's cool. All right. I'm the seller. 
we want to pay the bias commission. I think that was the objection. Is that right, David? I'm, I'm sorry. Am I, the, am, I, am I the buyer or the seller? You're the seller that does not want to pay a buyer's agent. You're at a listing presentation. You're at the table. David, this is your listing presentation. And he has a commission. Uh, here, here's what he says. I don't like the fee structure. Go from there. You're up, David. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, and I'm sorry, your name again? It's Tanner. Yeah. It's Tanner. Um, so what's most important to you? Um, are real estate fees or what you're going to net from the sale? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, like whatever I pay reflects on what I need. Yeah. Okay. And do you think that, and do you think that in today's market, buyers are ready and willing to pay for their own representation? Okay, I'm going to pause you a moment. Mm -hmm. So we worked on this last week. This is this is a very good point. I want you to I want you to understand. So watch this. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the slide here. Always remember, this. there's only four steps. So you don't like the fee structure. Is that right, Tanner? That's correct. Come on. Other than that, I understand. Other than that, is there anything else keeping us from doing business? No, Danny, I like the marketing part. Whatever you mentioned, it sounds good. So now, now what have we learned? That if we can deal with the fee, we're going to do business. The next thing here, clarify. All right. Remember, I said if you want to fly an airline, you, you can fly Southwest, but make sure you get to the Delta. Clarification is ask a question about what he just said. So you don't like the fee structure. What about the fee structure don't you like? You see, you want to find yeah. out where the problem is before you start fixing things. What about yes, the fee structure don't you like, Tanner? My, my sister in law told me that. You know, sellers are no longer, uh, I, I don't like, required to pay for buyer's agents. And I see basically the fee seems like, you know, it's too much. Based on that, I could pay you a fee, but I don't want to pay the buyer's agent. All right. So what you're saying is that you, you have, you, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. This is another way of asking a question. Your, your issue isn't my fee. Your issue is the fee paid to the buyer's agent. Is that correct? Well, overall, yes. Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, no, that's okay. You said he said overall. You see, when I don't get a clear answer, I, I asked my wife to marry me, right? And she 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 says, Yeah, maybe I think I might think about it a little bit. Well, okay, I will. Like, what? Wait a minute. I need a saw, I need something solid to stand on. When you said, well, overall, so let's uh, let's go one step at a time. My fee is at, uh, three dollars to list your home. That is, is that, correct. Is that fair to you? Yeah, if you could sell it for three for three dollars, I'm okay with that. But that that okay. All right, now you see what I did, David. That that that's what you wanted. That three percent. Okay, so so then basically, if we go forward today, we haven't. Let's just assume we had a pricing discussion already. Our fee from the listing standpoint is 3%. Are you ready to move forward? Oh, well, yeah. All right. I'm ready. Then. So what's my, favorite, what's my favorite term? Knuckle bump. bump. What have we just done? We have kind of a quasi agreement right now. Nothing in writing. Is there another conversation coming? Yes. This is no different than a seller wanting to list at a price you don't think it's going to be realistic. Well, okay, well, if we're gonna take the unrealistic price, you're gonna are you gonna hire me? Yes. Knock a bump. Do you mind if I counsel you on what's going to happen next? So now we're gonna have the conversation where you're going, David, after the agreement. And now you can uh, I'll turn it back to you, David. Now that he's agreed to list with you, he wants zero percent to the buyer's agent. Where would you take it from there? Because now what have you? First of all, what did you what have you just done? Did you not pick up a listing? Yes. Isn't that the goal? Absolutely. Get the agreement. 
That's yeah. a mistake that I commonly make instead of segregating and just asking, um, you know, aside from that, are they ready to move forward so that I know exactly what the problem is and getting them in agreement. Um, yes, that that's that's something I, I don't do right. So would you like to take it from that point now? You're yes. going to go on and how would you advise them about buyer compensation? Because they're, here's the good news is if your fee is three dollars, you're solid. You're in like Flint. Yeah. So all right, take the conversation from there, David. Okay. Um, well, we'll be happy to um put the property on the market. Um, and we look forward to assisting uh Tana in the event that we received an offer where the buyer is requesting uh the buyer's agent is re requesting compensation. Would you consider it if the net was something that you were that you were in agreement with? I'm I'm a little bit confused. So they would still uh, I, I don't have to pay the buyer agent anymore. You know, yes. this could be a really good that could be a really good question. Ask it again and 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 you all listen to this. So let's talk about this question because. At first, I didn't think you were going to go down a good, that was the right path. However, if you ask a seller that question and they say, well, yeah, if it was the right net, I would consider it. I think you just checkmated him. And what would that net be? And then, well, why don't we just, okay, well, I'm not going to get ahead. So ask the question again, Tanner, and answer it. This could be a good conversation. So, Tana, if we received an offer from the buyer um, and the buyer's agent is is requesting compensation, but you're agreeable with what the net is, would you move forward? Oh, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, I would think about it. Yes. I mean, if I, if and, I net and what would that net be, Tana? 500. 500, okay. Okay. And in the event that if we received an offer and and similarity that the buyer was requesting some concessions, but you still were able to net that 500 or more, you would move forward? So let me ask you a question. Why are you asking the question again when he's already said, I will pay the buyer's agent if the net is okay? You're going to the well again. Okay. I I'm just saying, you might... You have, I don't have to do all the talking here. I, I would have thought, I think you have one there. Now you're on the right track. Yeah. I wouldn't go back for concessions again. Okay. Should you also be bringing up, because just like on the three outcomes sheet on the listing, should you also be bringing up, like that's one option that it's going to meet the net, but should you like give them the option that, or let them know that like it's possible an offer will come in and it won't meet their net? Should that be one of the three outcomes so you prep them? I, I think, I, I think do that? yes, I think we should come up with a free option thing, uh, Jenica. That's a really good idea. Uh, well, hang on to that thought just a second. You ask him the right question. Notice David said, I know his name says Sherry, it's David. He said, what is that that Tanner said 500? Now, I, I, I know that we don't know what is list debt or what have you, but again, if you know that that net is 500 and you're listed at, let's say, 550 or 530 or whatever, if it's something less than the asking price, that should give you a clue that if you had it, let's say, it, all right, so I'll let you finish it. So he said 500. Where do you go from there, David? You're muted. You're still muted, David. You're muted. Just hit the space bar. There you go. Okay. Um, then I would say, uh, is it okay that I go over um, uh, what else, what, what will happen once we list the property? So Can now I you want to go through the three things? Yeah. Yeah, That the three things that we have, and I've got the sheet right here in case you are watching my video, you don't have it, you should have it. And I, I don't have my, my normal uh, co-host here to put it in the chat, but download that. Those three things are going to happen based on your positioning price-wise. 
So I don't think the same three outcomes happen based on compensation, because I actually believe that it's priced right, compensation won't be an issue. However, if there are, let's to go to Jenica's question, which I think is a good one. And let's just brainstorm right now, what are the outcomes, potential outcomes of the seller not offering buyer agent compensation? So I, one of them is, um, an offer comes in and the buyer's agent or the agent is requesting it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm receiving it. I'm receiving it before they schedule the showing. So you're saying uh, you're receiving uh, that the buyer. I've, I've had four buyer broker agreements, uh, broker to broker agreements sent before they confirm showing on my listing. Wow. Anybody else seeing that? They didn't even show it yet. Ginger, does your uh, little avatar ever go with the head up and down? It's always going like that, like a like a bobblehead. Oh, my yeah. coworker, my co I asked my coworker, and my coworker said that he had that happen to him yesterday as well. His first time it happened to him, but I've had four so far. A and I signed them, um, you know, so that they'll move forward. But I've received four prior to showing. So I think one of the outcomes that may come from it is it may, um, con, you know, lesser showings, um, if not offering a buyer's compensation. Okay, so what an outcome could, all right, an outcome can be lack of showings. Let's show you. It can be, uh, an agent's going to ask for uh, that to be in the contract. Mark, you're on here somewhere. You did pop on. Mark Benson, are you still on? Yeah, I'm here. Um, what other outcome can you think? I mean, I find it interesting. Now, David's in Lehigh, and he's already had agents send him over copies of their agreement, which I, have, I hadn't thought about that. So and why are you signing them, David? Uh, because these sellers were already in agreement to pay compensation. So it because I, it's removed from the MLS, but they were in agreement. Um, you know, they asked me, uh, two of the agents asked me what it was, two of them sent it. Um, and when they sent it, I responded back to what it was because one of them was lower than what they, uh, it was a two and a half and they sent a three. But um, all the sellers were in agreement with paying that already and our listing agreement to the buyer's agent. So I just signed them so that they would proceed forward. So hang on a minute. Um, I'm bothered by the fact you're signing anything. Anybody want to share other another thought on that? I don't think you're in the deal. I wouldn't sign it. What if your seller changes their mind? Well, they, they have a listing agreement stating that they would pay it. Yeah, but I don't. Well, okay, so does that with your broker policy that you sign it? No, no. This is all within like the last 48 hours. I haven't even had that conversation. So in this new market that we're in, sellers have a right to renegotiate the compensation that they're willing to offer or the concessions to a buyer, depending on what the offer is. So if you've got a $500,000 listing and someone makes you an offer for 400,000, the seller could change their mind about the compensation that they want to offer. I agree. So we can have another in-depth conversation about that, David, when we, when we have a conversation. So here's the issue is so I, what, what else is an outcome? Number one, or so this is my converse. This is your conversation with the seller. They've already agreed to pay you whatever your listing fee is. They don't want to give the buyer's agent any fee. So here's a, here's what's going to happen. Because I asked, can I tell you what's going to happen next? So we're not even going to go into the three showing, the three outcomes on, on pricing. Outcome one is that the agent may not show your home. Is that true? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So the, the question you have to have, I'm going to make you the seller, David. The question you have to you have to ask yourself is, do you want what percent of the buyer population do you want out there? Working as much as possible. People? Wait a minute. What what percent of the buyers do you want considering uh, your home? A hundred percent. Okay. So well, some of them will not consider your home unless you offer compensation. Are you okay with that? 
No. Okay. So are, are we not are we not having the conversation about the quote the dangers of overpricing, the dangers of not offering compensation? Are we not having that conversation with them? Outcome two. The agent may show it. And then if the buyer's interested, they're going to ask for compensation in their purchase agreement. Outcome three is they may be being totally compensated by the buyer's agent. Now I'm going to, now, now Jenica, this is your idea and I'll give you credit for it. I like the three outcomes. Can you think of another outcome? I was going to say like a lower price and no compensation. They might, could be, I guess that would still fall into the buyer's agent will pay their fees and then they will possibly offer lower because they have to pay them. So I would put that in the same ones. The agent's either going to offer it or going to require it in the contract, or they're going to subtract that amount from their offer. Fair. Now, do you think it's our, do you think it is our duty as their listing agent? Remember, we've already knuckle bumped. Should we be having this conversation of the potential dangers of not offering compensation? Yes. Mark? I'm going to say, uh, and, and I'm sorry I got on the call late. In reality, the buyer paid for their services of their agent all along in the, in the purchase price that they made. And it's just a matter that the seller set the amount of what the buyer's broker's compensation would be. Yes. And again, we that can, I believe all that comes out in the conversation we have. Um, so this is how I would handle that then. And this is a work in process. Number one, if, if, so David, if, if I send you, or I'm, I'll let, make it to everyone. If I, if I ask you, I mean, people are going to call, uh, uh, hey, Mark, you got a listing over there off Gulf Shore. What is the sellers contributing uh, uh, towards buyer compensation there? It depends on the offer. If it's a full price offer, they're offering X percent. I, I'm I'm in favor of for uh, in the in the sense of um, fair, not fair housing, excuse me, Federal Trade Commission regulations on um, restraint of free trade. I'm not going to give a percentage on this call, but I'll say we're going to offer X percent on a full offer, but it could change if if the offer is not a full offer. Yeah, uh, Gary, I, I totally get it. I mean, that's why I said three dollars or it could be two and a half dollars, whatever. He just doesn't like we percentages. Just, so we, we, we don't use actual numbers. We talk about watermelons and cherries. It's the same thing. So it doesn't really matter. So you have, OK, so for a full price offer, they will do X, right? Yes. So if it's all right. So anybody else doing that? First, I've heard of that idea. My next question is, okay, so if it's a dollar off X, what are they offering? You're asking me, that's up to the seller to determine when they receive your offer. I just wonder, and Mark, I know this is all new. I'm just thinking out loud here in front of everybody. When you say if they had a full price offer, would it be better to say- easy to steer. Would it be better to say if they had an acceptable offer, they would offer X? Because it could be $10 off full price. Correct. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, it's it's a variation on a theme. So David, when they when when you when you get yours as hey, what are you paying? And they're paying zero, and your seller's paying zero. Would you would you be would you let them know they're paying zero? No, because I think it's up to the seller for them to present an offer to them and then see if it's something that they would accept. No, and I think you're gonna have to tell me what is in your contract with the seller. Oh, currently. Yeah. So I'm calling you. You got a seller that's paying zero buyer's agent compensation okay. on 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 Lockhorn Drive. So on Lockhorn mm -hmm. Drive, what is the seller paying, David? No answer. Um, they're not paying a buyer compensation. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Do you say anything else? If I was in that situation, I would say to them that, you know, I would encourage them to show the property and that, you know, to present an offer and for them to, you know, present what they want to present so that I can present it to the seller. That's what I wanted to find out. So let's have a discussion about this. If you have a discussion with another agent about making an offer, this is this goes back to when we did real estate on rock tablets. That used to be a no-no, unless you had the permission from the seller to suggest they would accept anything less than asking price. Y'all hear? Anybody else have a, a thought on that? I, I don't think you should do that. This would be my conversation. Uh, the seller's not offering anything for a buyer comp compensation, David. Okay. Do you still like to, would you still like to show the home? Um, in the event that I presented an offer that was acceptable uh, to the seller, um, what do you think they would consider paying for my representation? Fair. Now, this is a, this is valuable, you guys. Now, I'm going to go back to, I've been doing real estate 40 years. I'm going to go back to what they taught me 40 years ago. Well, David, I've learned never to speak for the seller. So if you have an offer and the buyer, I mean, if you have a buyer that wants to make an offer, uh, ask less than for full price or offer a buyer's compensation, I'll be happy to present it. Full stop. What do you think of that, you guys? So if, excuse me. I'm I definitely, I definitely don't think you could say full price because if you say that, then it's like the agent is in a question of ethical duties because he's only going to, you know, now it's his commission that he's more concerned of than the client that he's representing instead of it just being accepted. <laughs> I would say you can make if if your buyer wants to make an offer, I'll present it. Margo, Margo, go ahead. I'm thinking if this is a phone call conversation that the, you know, if he if the listing agent goes back to the the seller and says, "Look, um, we're going to go ahead and pay that buyer. Is that is that okay with you?" Well. The agent can, or the seller can still turn around and say no. And then the listing agent who had that phone call with the buyer's agent, it turns out that there's nothing written. There's nothing solid that they can stand, no leg to stand on. So my suggestion in all of this is eliminate the phone call and just put it in the offer. Yeah, but David's having other agents call and ask what the compensation mm -hmm. is. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you. You're the listing agent. So Margo, you've got to listen over there on Lockheed, Lockheed Drive. What is the buyer agent compensation for that? The compensation is zero. Okay. Now, anything else you want to say? No. I would recommend again. I, I don't. I wouldn't coax them or try to sell it. I would say, well, Margo, I, let's just reverse. Margo, do you still want me to set up a showing appointment for you? Uh, yes. Okay, Ruby. That's Is it. The... That's all. I'm not. I'm not going to go down the road. Hey, look, you. They should know, but I'm not going to put my seller at a weaker negotiating point. Well, you can always make an offer to include it. I don't think that represents mm -hmm. the sellers well. Is that what you're saying, Margo? No, no. In fact, I'm driving, so I'm like trying to navigate both of this. What I'm saying is, is if a buyer calls a listing agent is and asks, well, how much is the sell is the listing agent offering in compensation? The listing agent should, in my opinion, should say, put it in the offer. Well, we're not talking offer. about a buyer call. We're talking about the agent, the buyer's agent calling. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, the offer. You bring up you bring up an interesting conversation, which I didn't think about. Let's say a buyer's calling you. I'm not sure we have to tell them. No, I agree. Any discussion on that? Well, if a buyer is calling and we're going to, are we going to be representing them or is he represented by someone else? Well, I think that's where the conversation goes. But 
for a buyer for a buyer to call and say, look, I see you've got a listing over there on Lockheed Drive. What is the seller willing to pay a buyer's agent? Let's have a discussion here. Is that something that you would give out to the buyer? Other listing agreements in California removed. There's no option to offer anything to a buyer in the listing agreements as of last week. So it's completely removed. So we, it's not in there. It's, it's a cool. Ours as well. Yeah. Ours as well. Nothing. Ours, you can put in the confidential remarks that concessions are, yes. are going well, That's wow. it. I, I don't think you can. But there's no field no. listing. That came in yesterday, Debbie. Okay, well, that's interesting. Well, here's the yeah. thing is that it's not that you may not be able to put it in in California, but that doesn't mean the seller can't offer it. Yeah. yeah. But, Sandy, can I ask a question about all this? Because this is where my concern in the practical field is, is that don't we want them to show the house? Isn't the goal to get the seller as many showings as possible? So, yes, we want to protect the seller's position on negotiations, but like, don't we want to encourage agents and cooperation to show the property? Uh, here's my here's my point. Great question. Watch my answer. No. Doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter, you guys? You coaxing someone to show the property is a big fat waste of time. Because if it's priced right, it will sell without the coaxing. People will want to show it without the coaxing. If you want to coax someone to look at your listing, then you're basically got an overpriced listing. Denny, my other thought was uh, a response might be, we're not, uh, the seller is not offering any concessions or buyer broker compensation that will be between you and your buyer to determine. In other words, the buyer can buyer. pay the, the buyer can pay their their agent or their brokerage directly. So so that's if a buyer calls you, Mark, and says, what are they offering for compensation? In either scenario, what whether it's an agent calling or a buyer calling, if we're saying that there is zero compensation and zero concessions it, it will be up to the buyer to compensate their buyer broker it, was anybody surprised about my answer to david no i don't believe we should be coaxing agents to show our homes i agree come on weigh in everybody here's the reason it won't matter if you have to coax someone to look at, if you got to coax them to look at your home, they're not going to buy it anyway. I, th I think you can benefit by asking the question, do you want to schedule? That's to me, that's almost a neutral one. I don't no, think that's considered, that I wouldn't yeah. say it's begging because I would, what I wouldn't want to do is have somewhere it, it come out, maybe from the buyer to the seller or some, at some point is your agent never encouraged us to, to schedule a showing. So I would say, if you're interested in the home, schedule a showing. I, I think we should do that. I, I, this is how I, I said that. Well, see, the, any compensation, would you still like, to, like me to schedule a showing for you? Well, no, not if they're not offering compensation. I said, well, okay. Yeah. David, what do you think? I just think that for the majority of the market I work in where buyers are not in a position um, out of pocket to pay for representation, it has to be part of the negotiation. It just proves a little challenging is all. So what would you say? Uh, in which position is the buyer or the, the... Well, I'm the agent and you tell me that there's no compensation for the buyer's agent. Oh, I said, oh, okay. Shucks. Uh, I would I would encourage them to to still show that you know are they interested in seeing still sh scheduling the showing? Well, no, because the, my guy doesn't have any down payment. Yeah. Well, okay, so I, I, I'm going to hop on David's side here just a second. Okay, well, you're you may be working with some agents, and I'll, I know we're getting close to the top of the hour that are a little inexperienced with this, right? So you can help them. So, well, let me ask you. A lot of agents that are unexperienced. Sure. Jesus. So, David, let me ask you, if your buyer didn't have the, the, like the cash, 
you think if they liked at home, there may be some creative ways that we can make this work? Now, that doesn't put sellers in a bad situation like you can make an offer. That's what I don't want you to say. Yeah. If the seller gives you permission to do that, then lower the frigging price. I definitely think it's important to encourage other agents and at this time where we're all just new to this to um, op from an optimistic standpoint, not a closed door, you know, creative, you know, encourage them that there's creative ways if the buyer likes the home to make the deal put together is anything that's a positive spin because this whole lawsuit has brought a lot of negative energy towards trying to make deals come together. If it appraises, then, they have, then maybe the, the offer needs to be above the list price or at a price where they can afford to pay their agent. Here, and I'm, I'm softening my position a little bit and agreeing a little bit more with David's position because I originally thought we would be coaxing them to show the home versus be creative. I might even say something like this. Well, you know, I tell you what, there's ideas out there that may work. However, nothing matters unless your buyer likes the house, which is still like to see it. I really like that. So that doesn't put your sellers... So I'm not against coaxing them and helping them. What I what I what I got my dander up with really fast was is well, hey, look, maybe the seller will just just include it in your offer. I don't want you to start going down and chipping away at your responsibility to the seller. I think that softens it a lot, Danny, because that that you, no agent's going to disagree with you that the buyer's got to like the house. So now you that that has you know pushed them to to want to do the showing because that's right. Whether they like the house is another story. And then it also takes away, you know, the, the agents, you know, realistically agents that don't want to, that, that finally may or may not work for free and have a grudge towards the situation. So that's great. This was an awesome comment. Hey, listen, I I'm, I'm walking through this with you as well. And I appreciate, you know, you guys are the core 20 or 30 people that come on here all the time. I'm getting better because of this conversation. And so did anybody hear something today that's worthwhile that you had kind of like a aha, I call the V8 moment? Share it with us. And mine was, some, is the balance between having no showings and having showings with feedback. And trying to talk it in a way that, you know, I like the last statement, then you take the pressure off. The, it's not fair that we put the whole weight on the sellers. It's kind of two way street. I like that, you know, uh, idea. Okay. I like that David shared with us his experience that he's having in his market. I'm not experiencing that yet, but I'm sure it's yet to come. And I do like just diverting back to the three outcomes with the seller, I think, and getting a little bit more clever with that, with the commissions. I'm going to work on that. And uh, that was kind of like, Jenica, you, uh, you kind of, Kind of brought that to the forefront. Thank you. Any other ahas? That was my aha. Come on and let them know what the what's going to happen next. And just as a summary, it, we may have fewer showings. That could be a conversation. The agent may may include uh, require it in the offer or subtract it from the offer. Or th we might find someone that actually being compensated. Oh no, this is probably how I do it. The agent's going to be compensated by their buyer, so they will subtract it from the asking price. And I'd like to ask, just to be clear, a buyer can pay their buyer's representation from concessions in the sale of the house? I, I don't know if they can do that. Can like can a can a buyer present an offer on the house with concessions to, to pay their buyer's agent from the sale? Are they able to finance that amount? I don't, have, I don't have a clear answer. I don't think mortgage people have a clear answer on that yet, except for maybe governmental loans. See, this is changing. You told me something, and David's in my market. I, I was told day before yesterday or early in the week that we can't put anything anywhere that has to do with compensation, concessions, or anything. Now, you tell me yesterday we are allowed to put in sellers that can pay $5,000 towards your, you know. No, 
No, no, no. Just it, it, they they sent an email back to my coworker and it said it has to say the only place it can say it is concessions negotiable and the confidential remarks. And it can only say negotiable, can't have a percentage or a price amount. But it contradicts itself when it comes from the MLS because then it says right underneath it that it can't say it anywhere. But that is what the response from the MLS was. He actually wrote the board and that's how the board responded, that it could say in the confidential remark, concessions negotiable. And I told Matt, it's a moot point. If an agent's working and they're going to negotiate, they're going to negotiate regardless. You don't have to, you don't have to market it. Yeah. I think the difference in distinction might be whether you put it in the MLS or whether you share it through an email communication, a text message, a website, or something of that nature. It's just, I know the Marco Island board sent out something, and the same thing I'm seeing in the Southwest Florida MLS is the words commission or, or concession cannot appear anywhere in the MLS. Yeah. Well, Marco, you had the right advice there. Just check with your broker. I know it's kind of a fluid thing. I trust the information, the discussion today gives you a little bit more confidence and clarity. It helped me a lot. I appreciate your input. And thanks for being on the mastery. Tell your friends about it. And uh, we'll see you uh, at on Recon on Monday uh, or maybe uh, mastery next Friday. Must be happy hour somewhere. Be careful out there. Love you, mean to knuckle bump. If I can help you, go to Danny Grimes at Gmail. Ciao. Thank you.